We would like to give you a very warm welcome at our another quarterly uh, conference with a presentation of our results. Traditionally, for some time now, we have organized those conferences in a hybrid form with some people uh, physically present here in the room and hopefully numerous people interested in our quarterly results following us online. Ladies and gentlemen, traditionally we will start with a presentation and that will be followed by a question and answer session. We have a standard agenda for today, something that you might have expected. So let's move on to the most uh, important things about uh, our bank. I am uh, hugely unhappy to announce uh, the results of the bank with a loss at at 347 million PLN. This is the highest ever loss in the history of our bank in recorded history. And uh, it would be hard to be happy about it. Of course, this is uh, the result of uh, credit repayment moratoria. We uh, posted the cost of that at uh, 569 million. And in the third quarter, we had also the additional uh, uh, um, uh, costs related to this ISP uh, system for prote commercial protection of, bank of commercial banks protection. If uh, uh, we uh, hadn't had those uh, negative impacts, the result would be close to 570 million. That would mark a completely different reality. So, in fact, if it hadn't been for the historical factors, so that is uh, provisions uh, for Swiss franc uh, loans, and uh, the uh, uh, repayment moratoria, we would uh, deal with a smoothly functioning bank returning uh, uh, on investment at uh, the rates expected. Unfortunately, the reality is different. Slightly positive information against this background is that after three quarters, uh, the bank remains uh, at profit at uh, 149 uh, uh, a million, which is of course a small amount uh, compared with our aspirations and the hard work that uh, um, almost eight and a half thousand people uh, provided during uh, this last year. And as regards other general things that happened, leaving aside those key numbers, uh, this has been a period of growth mainly in the corporate banking, where we increased our market share on the side of deposits as well as uh, on the side of loans. So in this respect, the bank grew. In retail banking, we are clearly uh, noticing uh, the slowdown in uh, the economy. Mortgage loan market uh, is uh, collapsing and we see also uh, downward signals in other types of loans, uh, that is cash loans or uh, loans, uh, non other non-mortgage loans. Uh, however, uh, Overall, we see a more intense activity of retail customers. Our clients use mobile banking and online banking more often than they do use our cards, which is good news to us. The bank was, uh, remains, and will uh, be focused on sustained development, sustainable development, um, on uh, ESG matters. We made some significant progress, uh, which we will comment later on. Actually, now, uh, let's look uh, at our strategic pillars. I will not discuss in detail all elements that you can see in the slide. I will just focus on those uh, related to ESG. Two pieces of information. First of all, about 600 million PLN was the growth in green financing volume granted in the third quarter. In total, this volume grew by 5.7 billion PLN, which is a solid, robust number and a very positive trend. Secondly, we uh, have received ESG uh, a rating uh, from Cessna Analytics, which is one of the leading uh, rating agencies in this area. Uh, 10.9 is the best ranking among all banks in Poland. This is a very, very attractive, good level, showing low risk uh, in the field of ESG in our institution. 
which is absolutely uh, the reason for us to be proud uh, of uh, our strategy and the correctness of action we take. I will not discuss uh, the details of other points. You can see them clearly and explicitly in a well-visible presentation. Statistics shown in the graphs uh, here uh, regarding our digital activity. We can uh, see that more and more our customers actively use uh, remote channels. This growth is higher in Go Mobile. That is our mobile application. Uh, personally, I'm also a faithful user of this application, and I can say with full responsibility that it is user-friendly, modern, easy to use, and multi-function application without any weird additions and things that are unnecessary. In my opinion, simplicity is sometimes much better than excessive finesse. The number of uh, tokens in digital um, portfolio shows uh, how many more uh, of our cards uh, are inserted in various mobile devices, uh, roughly 5% uh, growth quarter to quarter, and plus 18% uh, quarter to quarter in uh, transactions done by Blick which confirms uh, uh, what I mentioned uh, before, namely that our customers are uh, more uh, transactional, that is, they perform more transactions uh, using our channels. Here you can see a mix of uh, better news and worse news. I will start with the more positive news. Investment products plus 22% quarter to quarter I wouldn't like to uh, say that it is a beginning of a lasting trend. However, after the decreases from the previous trends, we can uh, see it as a positive uh, trend increase in the number of transactions on uh, payment cards and lower acquisition of personal accounts, as well as lower acquisition of uh, clients in uh, small and medium enterprises and corporate clients. This is linked to the fact that we focus increasingly on the customers who will be active in terms of making a big number of transactions and who will treat our bank as uh, the primary partner. Uh, and to a lesser extent do we focus on acquisition that just improves the statistics also, we see a lower activity of uh, customers resulting from the uh, global economic slowdown, uh, which we still do not know uh, how will develop and uh, how will transform or how long it will last. As for loan uh, activity, I mentioned those mortgage loans quarter to uh, quarter minus 91% on mortgage loans that shows the condition of the market reflecting the interwoven factors uh, that you uh, must have heard about uh, from a number of sources high interest rates so high cost it is more difficult to um, be credit worthy and uh, um, apartments are still expensive expensive also the whole housing market uh, is uh, burdened with a number of uh, risks first we had those related to uh, swiss franc loans now uh, repayment moratoria also a clear decrease uh, in uh, cash loans however it is not comparable in terms of scale with uh, mortgage loans we can see that our clients polish clients are, are worried about the material situation they feel they see that uh, funding is more expensive so they try to make some economies uh, and live more uh, uh, frugally because there is a lot of uncertainty ahead of us as regards uh, the dynamics, uh, they are, uh, in terms of volumes, positive. Uh, you can see it at a glance uh, with greater shares, market shares. When it comes to the number of clients in the retail, this has not, not changed. And we have uh, performed um, portfolio cleansing to close uh, durably inactive accounts so this was what has brought a global decrease or drop in the number of clients this is not a result of um, client skepticism or reluctance to work with us when it comes to the results themselves a couple of reflections 
the normalized income and uh, due to holidays, no change here quarter on quarter. Operating costs are quite out of control. The operating costs in quarter three is at a satisfactory level, especially given the um, inflationary and um, uh, wage pressure. We're going to manage our cost in a very prudent and rational way. We have uh, written off uh, extra amounts, 134 million zloty for the franc, uh, Swiss franc credit loan risks. So we've been busy building our reserves and uh, definitely it is not the end, as someone would, um, might have said. When it comes to profit, I told you the number of the loss uh, and the theoretical profit. And uh, I guess that backdrop, you would have uh, been more successful than the previous uh, periods. But now we are left uh, at the end of the day with uh, more than 300 uh, million of, lo of loss. The next satisfactory um, parameter is the cost of risk, a very small base amount, one of the smallest in the market, which has been corroborated, that corroborates our very rational approach to risk. And the quality of our portfolio remains at a very good level. The interest margin, no change here. We have modified our strategy a bit. In terms of using swaps, we will tell you later about that, and I expect your questions in this regard. The return on uh, capital, 2.3%, as we reported, it is not a satisfactory level for anybody. It would have been, or might have been, two-digit or double-digit, but, well, that's uh, how it looks like. Now, costs versus um, revenue ratio, this portion is still too high for us, so we will continue efforts to increase our quality, but still on, in our reports it has been at the level that we have never or almost never seen before. Now a word or two about loan holidays. I believe that this slide is self-explanatory. What is interesting is the number of the clients who applied for the uh, credit holidays. Uh, that's more interesting rather than the volume of those transactions. This is because uh, the clients who have bigger loans, who have incurred bigger loans, and uh, their volume is much higher, were the first to apply for the holidays because the benefits are the largest in that group. And I quoted an observation the other day in one of the prominent newspaper titles that the highest um, holiday loan was uh, oh, sorry, 8.7 million. And I wanted to draw attention all the politician or the decision makers in general to whether the holidays have been calibrated really soundly for those to benefit those who uh, actually need that assistance rather than you know going broadside uh, we have supported the holidays uh, we have implemented the applications and the remote channels however there are clients who apply for those holidays only for a partial period so i believe that this picture is uh, more complicated than it is at a first glance so much for the warm-up now macroeconomic figures and matter uh, good uh, morning and uh, good afternoon and uh, thanks Przemek. I'd like to give you a forward look at what happened, as what is going to happen because uh, it is quite obvious that the um, economy is slowing down and in the coming months and quarters 
economic activity will remain weak, very weak. Are we in for stagnation or a downturn, recession? Well, we'll have to wait and see because there are many, plenty of factors that can uh, affect uh, the economic, uh, st the status of the economy. Of course, the main factors include the war in Ukraine, which is ongoing, uh, the international economic situation is not very much supportive of the Polish economy. Uh, the EU funds are smaller than expected, uh, which is not helpful, especially from the point of view of investing. And last but not least, what is going to be the most important factor that inhibiting the economic situation is uh, the persistent and um, speeding up inflation that undermines the real income, disposable income that uh, restrains consumption and perspectives thereof. We expect the inflation to um, speed up in the coming months. We expect to reach over 20% early next year, but what uh, gives rise to my concern mostly is that expectations, inflation expectations of business and of households are detached from one another very strongly, so that may lead to inflation remaining with us for much longer than we wanted or we wished. And this is what National Bank of Poland also forecast, as well as what the uh, Monetary Policy Council referred to as well. Now the question arises about the shape of the monetary policy and its perspectives in the coming months. The inflation is going to speed up after two months pause, the real interest rates are going to be more and more negative. The real, realistic interest rates are going to be negative and the largest banks will continue the process of monetary tightening frugality. We may wonder if the current interest rate of NBP are sufficient to stabilize the financial market, especially the debt and um, the exchange rate of Zloty. Now, with regards to our business, our bank sector, the, this coupling of high interest rates, uh, downturn and uh, inflation is detrimental to uh, the um, need for loans, although the consumption loans, uh, consumers' loans have been on the rise and are still at the very decent level. And households, in households, however, new production grounds to very small numbers. I don't want to finish my short speech on a pessimistic note because but the upcoming months are going to be difficult and full of challenges but to avoid finishing on a very a negative note we should re remember that the private sector has went into the downturn uh, with the very high number of profitable businesses, the number of which is quite high, and similarly the households uh, have the similar experience. Unemployment remains low, even though there is a downturn, we may be hopeful that once the economic situation improves and the economic policy becomes more consistent, our economy may return to on the uh, sustainable and quick growth path. Thank you very much and over to uh, Jean -Carlo, Jan Carlo. Good afternoon.
as already did, uh, stated by Pshamek, at the end of the first quarter, the business uh, trends were positive uh, in terms of uh, loans uh, portfolio. The growth was close to 11%. We kept on strengthening uh, our um, deposit base, and the deposit uh, grew by 15.4% year to year. Unfortunately, the net result was significantly impacted by two components. The main one being related to the impact of the credit holidays, uh, and the second one by the creation of IPS. So it means that at the end of the third quarter, net result reached 889 million sloty, down by 58% compared to the previous year. NBI grew by 3.3% year to year, few components explaining such evolution. The first one is related to the increase of the preference rate, which gave a positive impact in terms of revenue, but we are facing a few challenges, such as the gradual increase in the cost of deposit, visible that uh, the fight for the liquidity has started, and on top, a significant increase in the cost of cross-currency swaps. It's a topic that I'm going to explain uh, further in recognition of the NII component. In terms of cost, significant pressure on the cost coming from the inflation first, and also growing cost uh, coming from DLG and IPS. In terms of uh, ratio, so cost income ratio reaching 62.9%, so plus 10.6, compared to the previous year, if we normalize the cost income ratio, the cost income ratio will be better by 6.7%. So, in terms of uh, CHF mortgage loan portfolio, we are keeping on increasing the coverage ratio. In terms of uh, impairment, I would say good quality of our assets, cost of risk uh, uh, under control, plus 14% compared to the previous year. Focusing on the loan portfolio, a positive uh, trend at the end of the quarter, so overall plus 11%. If we adjust the growth by the impact coming from the credit holidays, the gross book value adjustment, the growth will be 12.1% with two different uh, stories. The first one, very good trend in terms of corporate business, plus 15.5% year to year. So really a uh, positive trend. Um, in terms of retail business, it's visible that the demand is lower so down is visible, uh, growth close to 5% five, 5 year to year, and moderate quarter to quarter. As regards the CHF mortgage loan portfolio, the first topic is that this portfolio has been impacted by the deterioration of SOTI vis-a-vis Swiss franc. First topic, and then uh, we are keeping uh, on negotiating with our customers, so we reach more than 1,000 uh, positive negotiations, which is a good news. And in parallel, we are keeping on increasing the coverage ratio. At the end of the third quarter, we book additional 134 million slotty, which uh, allow us to, to reach 36.9% coverage ratio. Deposits. So in terms of deposits, it's an information you already uh, shared during the previous presentation. Uh, we are strengthening our deposit base. The liquidity is more and more expensive to the same extent, and we have decided to secure the liquidity position. So gradually, so we are changing the structure of the deposit base. So less and less non-remunerated deposit, and more and more remunerated deposit. So the cost of the deposit gradually increase quarter to quarter. Investment product we are able to, 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 to limit uh, the decrease. So it's here that there was a slowdown in the outflow from investment product. Year to year, significant drop, 42.1%. Quarter to quarter, much more moderate, 3.1%. Let's have a focus on the NII, and I think I'm going to spend more time to explain what we did. So in fact, we have to analyze the net entrance income with the net trading income. So year to year, having uh, taking into account the impact of the credit, credit holidays, net 
net interest income were flat if we exclude the impact resulting from the credit holidays plus 42.4%. The evolution is explained by different parameters. The first one is obvious, it's coming from the increase in the NBP rate, but in parallel, we are facing with two challenges. The one I already referred to is related to the gradual increase in the cost of the deposit. So Q3 compared to Q2, we increase the cost of the deposit in order to be able to gather additional deposit and secure the deposit uh, position. This is one of the key topics. We have booked a provision for, for, for uh, 29 million slot T, which is related to the fees we have to reimburse to the customers uh, related to the, to the registration, the registration of the mortgage. So it's a specific topic. So 29 million slot T. And another component which is significant, I'm going to spend more time, we change our approach to manage the liquidity in euro due to the significant increase of the cost of the cross-currency swap. So to get a clear picture, it results in a negative impact in NII. To make it short, now we are placing the money into Nostro account instead of investing in bonds portfolio. All in all, it translated 80 million negative impact in NII. In parallel, it resulted in a positive impact in net trading income. And we are going to look at it later, and you will see that there is a correlation. By doing so, we were able to limit the loss resulting from the increase on the cross-currency swap. If we have not performed such change in our approach, the impact will be 30 million. So negative additional impact, 30 million. In terms of fees and commission, I would say we're able to maintain the level of commission at a very satisfactory level. Year to year, plus 17.1%. Quarter to quarter, minus 5.2%. But the decrease is still moderate with two areas which are obviously impacted. The first one being related to the loans and the second one being related to the assets under management, as we saw previously. So now I'm coming back to the second part of my explanation related to the change in our approach in terms of liquidity in euro. As you can see now, so in terms of net rating income, significant increase quarter to quarter. In terms of transaction with the customer, stable level compared to the previous quarter, meaning that the saving we get coming from, I would say, our change strategy and no more cross-currency swap is giving this positive impact. So combining NII evolution and net trading evolution, you can see that there is a sort of compensation. In terms of net investment income, few million coming from the evaluation of a portfolio, which is measure at fair value. Operating expenses, depreciation and amortization, year to year plus 24.3%, so huge pressure coming from inflation, which is uh, obvious. And the second topic, additional uh, regulatory cost, we this year, the main one related to the creation of IPS. Quarter to quarter, the good news is that we are able to keep under control our cost. So our cost decreased by 3.5% quarter to quarter if we are excluding all the mandatory cost. And as you can see, we are keeping on updating and changing our operating model, which is translating in a decreasing trend in terms of FT. Few words about the net, net impairment losses. I think it's not something new, it's something uh, we already share. So low cost of risk in uh, Q3. Year to year, slight increase, plus 40%. It, uh, it demonstrates that um, Credit policy is the proper one, and asset quality is, is really good. 
but we have no alert so far. On top, we have performed some adjustment in our methodology. The first one was related to the, what we are calling the post-model adjustment, uh, translated in a positive impact of 37 million slotty. We review uh, our approach in terms of provisioning for the slotty mortgage loan, focusing on the specific bucket, which is linked to the customers having DTI above 70%. Uh, and it results in additional provisioning of 21 million slotty. And the last adjustment is related to the change in the model and more granularity in the parameters we are using. I'm referring to LGD, which gives 16 million slotty positive impact. NPL ratio, I would say uh, no deterioration. So 3.3% at the end of Q3. So, which is which is a good news. A slight comment about the NPL ratio for farmers. Slight increase coming from the fact that this portfolio is a, is a decreasing portfolio. So, NPL is to some extent stable, but the portfolio is gradually decreasing. Overall exposure for agro. In terms of staging, uh, stage stage. Stage two, so, so no significant change quarter to quarter. So uh, the, um, the evolution is, is not negative. Uh, slight increase in, in terms of stage uh, two for institutional coming mainly from leasing and a few exposure which have been transferred from stage one to stage two. Capital ratio. So capital ratio is still above the minimum capital requirement, so we still have a buffer. A negative impact coming from two components. The first one, gradual increase in the face quoted asset, so uh, as a consequence of our growing business. And second factor coming from the significant, uh, I would say, negative variation of bond portfolio, which uh, is impacting our tier one ratio. Jean-Charles. Thank you, Jean-Charles. To summarize all that, I think I'm pressed to say one word. Unpredictability and uncertainty. We live in a world which makes it very difficult to predict what happens in a quarter's time, or not to mention a year and times where we were able to forecast very easily the exchange rate in five years with the granularity of three uh, digits after the decimal point. We have a war in Ukraine, we have high inflation, we have a downturn which may transform in a, into a recession and we don't know how long that would last. We have energy crisis. We are looking at um, winter coming. We don't know how long it will last and what the situation with energy or fuel sources will be like. So there are many factors that impact that uncertainty. What is very important for our bank, in our opinion, is that we are a very agile organization that is absolutely capable to adjust to new real and we showed that we demonstrated that right after the COVID-19 pandemics broke out we also proved that when new regulatory challenges appeared and I believe that in that in those times full of turmoil we are going to um, survive uh, we're going to continue our technology transformation and we still have a long way to go but we are very happy and proud of the progress we have made thus far we are going to focus very much on sustainable growth and we're going to uh, be very meticulous uh, about our client relations we know that they are under stress and the situation might be more difficult than it used to be in the past and our role is to accompany them in that difficult 
time. We believe that the bank has very much uh, get up to weather the, the storm. Well, there will be a silver lining to that cloud, and I think the situation going forward will be good. Thank you very much, and uh, I open the floor for questions. Good afternoon, Adam Sofo has been used. I do agree that it's very difficult to forecast anything, but could I ask you about the projected scale of deterioration of your portfolio and uh, increase in uh, the risk cost? An extra follow-up question about corporate loans. It's uh, quite natural that small and medium-sized companies will be uh, not so good off, will be worse off, but which industries are going to be impacted at the most? And next question, what is your prediction about uh, how the people spend their holiday money? Do they pay it back to you? What is the scale of uh, that exercise. And then the final question is about new reference rates. Are you prepared? Okay, let me start from the very um, recent question. We are prepared for the new reference rate. We are participants of that exercise. We are in touch with other banks and with the association of the Polish banks. The reform is going forward. That is going to happen, although we were surprised by it originally. And the good news is that as a result of the National Working Group, it's not going to be the 1st January 23, but rather the January 1st of 25 will be that day when uh, the current rate will be replaced by a new one. So I am not going to offer you any, any other thing on that. When it comes to predictions of costs, uh, we do not uh, disclose any forward-looking numbers, but we are busy with reviewing a portfolio on an ongoing basis, and that portfolio does not show any indications to be worried. We have been very conservative and meticulous in building a portfolio, and we are optimistic. From that point of view, you asked another part of the question is which, about which industries will be affected the most, I believe. Well, I think what looms of our economy is the downturn of the consumption, of consumption and uh, the internal uh, demand. I see Michal nodding. Those industries which are very much dependent on consumer activity will be put under special pressure. But if I may offer you a helicopter view, the Polish companies at large are in a good standing and well prepared for more difficult times. Even um, drop in sales, if materializes, will not translate to serious problems. And less officially, a little bit off the record, I should say that in uh, my conversations with the business people, be it uh, business-wise and also um, as part of socializing, I have never had any op dramatic opinions. On the contrary, sometimes I hear some optimistic comments. We plan investment or we hire new people. And one more reflection, if you permit me. In uh, the context of the uncertainty about what might happen, well, one day uh, the war in Ukraine will come to an end. And I believe, hopefully, as most of us here, uh, I believe that uh, this war will end well for Ukraine and for the liberal world. Once this happens, I would expect an outburst of euphoria, a complete change in the mood, the uh, diffusion of tension, uh, 
which uh, the war caused in uh, the neighboring countries. And this might be a huge stimulus, uh, um, creating positive energy and giving business courage. I think a crisis is caused, any crisis is caused by emotions, psychology, and uh, what we have in our heads. And if we uh, clear uh, our heads of uh, political emotions, we might be more enthusiastic about dealing in a positive way with business and economy. And uh, I have already forgotten the second question. Okay, now, uh, I uh, will be direct. I do not have at hand uh, any studies or or analyses on this point, but after the first month of uh, credit holidays, we had uh, surplus payments, uh, we had increase in people spending on household appliances, on the holidays. Uh, I uh, do not uh, have, and probably we will not have within a short time, any more accurate studies, uh, but yes, uh, there are uh, uh, those things going on. But I think we uh, should not uh, record uh, uh, surplus payments if the uh, credit holidays had been calibrated uh, accurately to help those who are really in need. Unless there are further questions from the room, we have uh, some questions asked by participants online. Jan Martinkowski, does the bank plan uh, to join Android uh, Proximity Blake like uh, Pekao, Santander, Alior Bank? If so, uh, when, within what time perspective? Well, the fact that a few banks have implemented this uh, has not yet convinced us this is a priority. Now we're working on implementing Blick for um, entrepreneurs, micro segment clients. So as of now, I cannot give you an answer when uh, Blick uh, on Android, uh, proximity Android will be available on our offer. Jacek Gramotowski, Interia. Do you see any trend for people to transfer their funds from uh, PLN to foreign currency deposits? Maybe I will take this question because the data are generally available. You can find it on the website of the National Bank of Poland, uh, looking at the breakdown by months. Indeed, uh, since the pandemic uh, broke out and new uh, factors of uncertainty appeared, including the war in Ukraine, uh, indeed, the structure of deposit uh, changed. Uh, we have a growing share of foreign uh, currency and deposits. That is probably a natural rela uh, response. Probably the share of uh, um, foreign currency deposits uh, was considered by households as insufficient before those two major crises uh, began. But um, this is uh, Not really something that would uh, change the whole banking sector, putting us on an explosive dynamics with some major uh, reason for concerns in macroeconomic uh, terms. And another question from uh, Mr. Jacek Gramotowski, Interia. BGK and PFR um, uh, bonds are to be exempt from uh, banking tax. Does your bank have the intention to grab this opportunity and uh, get exposure to those instruments? We will see. The bank uh, uh, that's subjective, uh, subjectively about finances, but the bank had recorded the decrease uh, almost to zero on uh, mortgage loans. How long will this freeze last and what effect it might have on banks' profitability? Uh, I would like to remind that uh, the demand in mortgage loans significantly decreased. So I would say uh, the gap between uh, 
uh, being more selective in granting a mortgage loan and a market which has totally collapsed is not huge. How it will last, I cannot answer the collapse of the market. In terms of profitability, I would say that uh, this is our job to adapt. So it's a new parameter, and so we are going to adapt. Maybe I will add something in more macroeconomic terms. Indeed, it seems that the demand for mortgage loans uh, uh, responds uh, uh, to interest rates. We know that this is a long-term uh, product, so compound interest and cost of the loan matter. But on top of that, there are uh, various other factors related uh, to the need for housing. Uh, in Poland and uh, in general, we uh, have a shortage of uh, housing and uh, we should have more uh, flats, more apartments, more houses to meet uh, the needs of uh, the society in general. Once the interest rates become less painful to households, the demand for mortgage uh, loans in connection with this uh, not satisfied social need for housing uh, should uh, appear. But today it would be hard to say that it will happen in a year, in a year and a half, or maybe in nine months from now. But at some point the demand will appear because we still do not have uh, enough uh, um, housing spaces. We do not have enough housing in terms of uh, uh, thinking that every uh, family should have its own uh, house or apartment. There is a certain cultural background uh, which uh, makes people think that you should be the owner of uh, a flat, apartment, a house. While many countries uh, um, in Europe uh, or in the US rely on rented um, apartments, rented uh, houses. So maybe we should launch a discussion on that. Should it really uh, be uh, the common belief that you need to be the owner of a flat or house, or could you simply rent it, just philosophically speaking? Trigon. How come you have those record low uh, costs of risk uh, in the face of uh, macroeconomic slowdown? Was there any change? Uh, was sale? Uh, no, no major sale that would affect this. Trigon, what was the quarter to quarter dr uh, uh, drop uh, due to on uh, uh, debt uh, papers and bonds? Uh, I think uh, uh, Jean Charles explained that in his presentation. dimension and also the termination of some uh, aging. Ipopema. Prośba o outlook na marżę odsetkową. Czy bank osiągnął najwyższy poziom na... Ipopema. Uh, did the bank achieve the highest uh, uh, margin on uh, interest rate? Uh, assuming that uh, the costs are as they were presented? Question mark. Out with one parameter, which is what about the next evolution of the NBP rate. So we no, we don't know. Enfin, we know recently, but for the future we don't know. But what we know is that we are facing with a growing um, cost of deposit. The competition is there. So I would say at this stage that we can assume that we reach a peak uh, in terms of net net interest margin coming mainly from the growth in the cost of deposit. Next question, Ipopema. What was the impact of COVID-19 quick fix on the capital parameters? What will be the reserve for supporting loan takers in Q4-22?
COVID, sorry, COVID quick fix impact 44 basis points in terms of tier one. Appreciate. And the provision for the creditor support fund in Q4? I don't remember that, but it's not a significant number. In Q4? Uh huh. No, so the, the Sprawdzimy... what market it was uh, when on almost 50 million slotty for the borrower support funds. Sorry, I have a technical issue. So what we announced, uh, 50 million slotty initially as a, as a potential impact. We have to keep in mind that potentially the, the rules of allocating uh, uh, the additional contribution is going to be impacted. The first one by getting, uh, which basically is not going to be a part of uh, the, the bank contributing. And uh, we have to, to wait what next. So it's highly likely that the impact will be higher than the one we disclose. Czy Bloomberg uh, News? Czy BNP zdecyduje się Bloomberg News. Will BNP make uh, the accommo frank accommodation, frank accommodation more plausible given the um, EU? Uh, Justice, Court of Justice um, verdict. I'll take this question. I am not going to speak about negative impact of that verdict of uh, Eurojust. We expect this to happen in the second quarter of next year. It might not need to be very negative. We have implemented a pilot project to strike agreements accommodations with uh, loan takers these are negotiable and we are going to adjust that pilot project and the conditions thereof to the current situation i would be far away from pessimism when when the next year's um, court of justice verdict is concerned that was the final question the last question thank you are there any are the are there any questions from the internet or from from the room here? Well, if not, if there are no other questions, I can't hear any. We thank you very much on behalf of uh, the management board of BNP Paribas Polska for your partaking this meeting, and we are looking forward to host you again. Should you have any questions later on, we would be more than happy to take them. All the best to you. Thank you.